Hello there. Got a little something kind of odd this time. Got a circular journal going on. It started out with uh, the journal I recently did called Live, Pondering My Open Letter to Mind, or Beauty and Union. And then when I went to write a little bit about that to put it on Scribed and put the link out there, the, the little bit of writing turned into a little bit more. So that's what I'm recording now. Uh, so it has the same title. <clears throat> so coming out of hiding a bit, which I felt I was in after posting that risque letter to mind <clears throat> to offer some live musings on its effect, Will it bring benefit, bring blessings? Oh yes, I know the open letter will offend some folks. Not too long ago, I would have been one of the offended ones. I would have refused to listen to tolerate language like that. And I thought it was obscene. Yes, the pointing, judging finger. We all either have or have had one of those, if we're honest and admit it. And I like to take that a step farther. That sort of wins the argument every time. I like to realize that if not in this lifetime, then in one of the many other ones. I have surely been there and done that, whatever it is. So. Who am I to judge? That always seemed to work for me when I found myself getting too hoity-toity or uppity about something. That one is a real and honest set down for whatever ails you. Another way to say pretty much the same thing is there, but for the grace of God, go I. Oh my God, folks, we are all just alike in there, deep down enough, you know. I mean, even aside from our overall oneness. If we just consider how in all of the many, many lifetimes we've lived, here, there, and elsewhere, most likely, we've no doubt gotten into whatever there is to be gotten into. So who are we to judge anyway? Judgment is a terrible energy to mess with. It feels so terrible to receive, don't you know? We've all been judged by others, by someone at one time or another, likely many times. We know what that energy feels like to be on the receiving end of it. Well, please consider. That energy is actual pollution. It really is. It's a poison that pollutes the world just on a different level than the BP oil spill, than the pollution that is directly visible to our eyes. We are all just now beginning to become sensitive or more sensitive to energies, to vibrations and frequencies. Everywhere people are talking about this, experiencing it in their own unique ways, interpreting and trying to understand it. And that's just the mind, of course, but that's okay. You know, we all do pretty much the best we can, pretty much at all times. Let's start giving each other credit for that. Why not, right? Just another way to help eliminate toxic poisons from invading our space. Cut everyone some slack. <laughs> I hear it's called love. Anyway, pretty much everyone has at least heard of the aura and has some sense of what it is. It is the energy force field around the body being. It is our space. It carries the vibe of our unique energy, our frequencies, the frequencies of our thoughts, feelings, emotions, and all that. Depending on how you've used your energy in life, you carry around the results of that 
wherever you go in your aura, your unique creation. Well, I'd like to suggest one way to look at that. See being, 3D being, as fourfold. We have not only the physical body, but a mental one and an emotional one and an etheric one as well that carries the blueprints, the schematics, the divine plan for our life and so on. You can see these like interpenetrating force fields, all being somewhat different in shape, size, color, viscosity, but all occupying roughly the same space. Altogether, they comprise the aura that surrounds the physical body. Now, there's more, and surely one could complicate this by adding in the soul, the chakras, the flow of energy or chi, even what's called the electronic belt, where the denser of our karma is stored, all of that. But that isn't necessary to this basic understanding that I'd like to share. As we walk through a room, actually as soon as we enter it, we get a read on it and on the people in it. We are energy beings and we read energy like this all the time. Most of us just A, don't know it, B, don't believe it, and so it follows then that C, we aren't necessarily consciously aware of it. Well, that is marvelously easy to correct. Just open up to it, to the possibility of it to begin with. We're all shut down in fear, you know, and this just isn't necessary. We're huddled down, locked down into our own little